I know what I believe in. And today's sermon is going to be Scars Shaper. That's God. He's going to shape our scars. And I want to go, let's go to 2 Timothy now, chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 11 and 12. And that's where we're going to be preaching out of today. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, if you want to kind of put your finger there, we're going to head over there in just a few minutes. Um, we've been teaching on what we believe in, and we talked about salvation the first week. We talked about sanctification, uh, living a holy life for God. Uh, we talked about, what did we talk about last week? Um, the Holy Spirit, right? And this week we're talking about suffering for God. Amen. How many love to hear that? Well, we're going to suffer for the kingdom of God. Amen. One amen. Thank you, Lewis. That's not really, you know, the, you know, happy thing to talk about. But I tell you, what, let me share with you how your scars and how God puts you through stuff so you can be a witness for him and use it for his glory. Amen. And sometimes when you're going through stuff, because we all go through stuff, amen. When you're going through that stuff, God's going to use that stuff to bring glory to him. Amen. But I'm telling you what, when you're going through the stuff, it don't feel good. Hallelujah. How many have been through some stuff? Uh, how many got some scars? Hey, if you got a physical scar, you, how many have a physical scar? I don't want to see it. You know, I just want to, if you got a scar, like I got a scar up on my forehead here when I fell. Uh, who's got, who else got, you got any scar? Yeah, you got scar, physical scars. Amen. And you, you remember, don't you remember to this day how you got that scar, don't you? Amen. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. So let's look at First Corinthians, uh, Second Timothy, I'm sorry. And verse 11, and it says, And of this gospel, say, and of this gospel, and of gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That, everybody say that, that, is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I believe, and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. Let's pray. Father, again, I just thank you for the opportunity to stand here before these people and allow me to proclaim your word. Father, I pray you touch our hearts together that we can be conformed to the very image of Christ in this world. Father, I pray you anoint and hide me behind the very cross of Christ that he may be glorified through the words I speak today. Bless your people, Lord. Anoint them, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul said in the suffering for the gospel, he said he wasn't ashamed of that. Amen. I'm not going to be ashamed of the suffering that I'm going through. And if you look back, Let's, uh, I'm sorry, let's just uh, jump over to 2 Corinthians. Paul described about 10 years earlier from this writing what he was suffering. And let's go to 2 Corinthians, if you, you can go there real quick. And let's look at some of the things that Paul described. He was in an argue. How many know that Christians like to argue about stuff? Do we baptize in water? Or do we just sprinkle? You know, do we do say in the name of Jesus or we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit or do we not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Do we, you know, is salvation the moment you say Jesus Lord or does it come a few days later? You know, we just argue about some of the silliest stuff in Christianism. Amen. And Paul got in this kind of argument again. And we had these super apostles. You can read in the first part of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, chapter 11, and these super apostles were arguing with him, and they're like badgering each other over their credentials. And so Paul goes, and let's look, start with verse, um, let's, let's look at verse 20. It says, in fact, he, you even put up with everyone, anyone, excuse me, who enslaves you or exploits you or tests, takes advantage of you or punishes himself before or slips you or slaps you in the face. To my shame, I admit that I, that we were weak too. 
for that. And you're, 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 talking, you're, you're talking about the uh, super apostles and, and how they deceive people. Now, it says, look at the, it says, uh, the next verse, before 21, it says 21, what anyone else dares to boast about, I speak as a fool. I also dare to boast about too. So Paul's not saying, I don't want to boast about my credentials. Paul was a, a Pharisee. He was an educated man. He was a well-known. He was a great teacher. He had a, a he had a badge of he could say look at my he had a, probably had a wall if he was in today with all his doctrinal degrees on it. I mean Paul had was you know he was that type of person, but he didn't boast about that to these guys. Let me show you what Paul did boast about. Look at the next part. It says um, verse twenty as they are are they Hebrews so am I are they Israelites so am I are they Abraham's descendants so am I verse twenty three. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. And Paul just saying, hey, I don't want to argue about this stuff because it's silly. It's not important about those things. But look what he says. I am more, he says. He's cautioned. Paul didn't want to argue about this, but he felt like he had to defend himself. So he said, let me defend myself, not with my credentials, but let me show you my scars, okay? He says, I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, how many have been in prison for the gospel? Nobody here? Not yet, okay. Been flawed more severely, have been exposed to death again and again. Five, now listen to this, verse 24. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Now, do you remember the, the movie, The Passion of Christ? Remember that movie? And they showed how the Roman soldiers whipped Jesus 39 times. And it showed in that movie, and I don't know, I never, I watched it once, I couldn't ever watch it again. It just broke my heart to think that a man would do that for me. Paul did that five times. Three times he was beaten with a rod, once he was stoned, three times I was ship, shipwrecked, I, was, I spent a night and a day in open sea, I have been... Um, Constantly on the move, I have been in danger from rivers and in dangers of bandits and dangers from my own countrymen, that would be the Jewish people, and dangers from the Gentiles, the ones he came to tell about Jesus. He was mandated by God to go to the Gentiles. They he was in danger from them. And he was in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst. I have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressures of my concerns for all the churches. He was like the superintendent of over all the churches. Think about it, all the missionary journeys that he went on, the two missionary journeys, all the churches that he started, he was concerned about that. He put leaders in place, he put this, the, uh, the church board in place, if you will. He, he was concerned about them. So all the pressures of church people too, he was worried about that, and then he was worried about all those things. Paul went through all that. He says, look at, let, let's go on, verse 28. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressures of my concerns for all the churches. In verse 29, who is weak? And I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I do not inwardly burn. That means he doesn't have any sin within him. He's not, you know, afraid of the guilt of pain and sin. He says, verse 30, If I must boast, I will boast of the things that shows my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. Paul's saying, look at me. I am going to show you my ministry, not be by the credentials. He could have listed all the churches that he planted, all the people he put in leadership. He could have looked at all his degrees and all his credentials. He didn't say, look at my badges. Don't look at that. He said, look at what I suffer for the gospel's sake. How many would say that? How many would say, like, look what I'm suffering for Jesus' sake? I read an article just yesterday. Uh, it was last night I read it. In um, Syria, last night, uh, some people came into the uh, um, convent, killed the three priests that were there. I don't know if they beheaded them or what they did. And they took all the nuns, including the, the what's this, the lead nun called? Uh, there's a name for that. I've been a long time since I've been in the Catholic Church. 
Mother Superior, and the, then the, the 12 uh, other nuns that were there. And the reason they stayed in the convent is because there was orphans there, and they, were, they knew these rebels were coming to attack, but they stayed there because they wanted to take care of the orphans. They gave their life for these children. They're suffering like we'll never know. Amen? And these women will not be treated nicely over the next whatever time until they get set free, if they even get free. Maybe that's suffering for the gospel's sake. Don't look down now. Come on. I'm just telling you, there's a badge of honor that we can wear for the gospel that maybe is what we should be really looking at. And maybe for us today, it's not just, you know, uh, look at my credentials, but maybe look at, look at, what would it be like now? Well, somebody made fun of me because I'm a Christian. Or somebody made fun of me because I said, Happy Merry Christmas. Does that sound so silly today? When you think about those nuns, what they're going through maybe today? It's really, it's really sad. There's a, um, Paul was just saying, he was just saying, I want to prove to you my ministry by what I'm going through. Instead of what I've done. Amen? There's a, um, There's a, the word, I looked at the word mark, and it has two different definitions, or two different, uh, yeah, two different definitions, and one talks about the mark or a, a badge, uh, the other one talks about a mark being like a bruise, like an injury, a scar, and I believe the Lord, you know, he puts us through stuff for a reason, and our, in our weaknesses, in our, maybe for us it's not, I'm getting whipped or beat or stoned or lift, left for, on a shipwreck and on an island. I mean, think about what happened with Paul when he was shipwrecked. Everybody on that ship was saved. One up on an island got snake bit. You know the story in Acts, right? Threw off the snake into the fire, right? And everybody waited for him to die. And then what happened? He shared the Jesus, the reason he did die is because of the Jesus that he serves. And shared with them in that whole, that whole village, the people that helped them when, uh, when they were shipwrecked, all of them became, got saved from the, the king or the elder of that village all the way down. That's, that's what it's all about. Why do we go through what we go through? Say, Pastor, this is not a very happy message this morning. I say, well, that's okay, because you know the reality is, we need to realize that suffering for Christ is okay. Amen? Suffering for the Lord is okay. And then we need to pray for those that are suffering now for the kingdom of God. Amen? And I don't, I don't think in America we really worry about those people. Amen? Come on, how many, how many, don't raise your hand, but this thing about it, how many here worry about somebody in Africa or Mexico or Syria or Iran or Iraq where they're burning churches and they're, they're taking the leadership, the pastors and the pastor's wife and abusing them in front of the congregation, amen, and they're killing them for the God, because the only reason, their only identity is that they're Christians. I don't mean I don't mean American Christians. I don't mean like, hey, I saw, I'm a go to church on Sunday Christian guy. I don't mean just a you know I wear the title I have a bumper sticker on my car Christian. I mean the Christian that is laying their life out for the kingdom of God, sacrificing what they have so others will know Jesus. Those Christians, Amen. Willing to take their last breath and not de deny Christ. Those Christians, Amen. Is there a difference? Come on, smile on me. There is. Come on, there is a difference. And we need to be ready for that. Maybe the warning in my heart is that we need to be ready for that. Is that okay? Maybe we, our celebration of Christ this year is that we're ready to do what it takes to see my neighbor come to Jesus no matter what persecution comes. Amen? I got on this last week too. I said, you know, this is what I feel like the Lord's doing. We have to prepare ourselves if we're going to be a witness in the city of Madison and we lose our tax exempt status because of it, so what? Is that going to stop you from being uh, meeting together with God's people to encourage each other and strengthen each other so we can see the gospel proclaimed in our city? Yes? 
I believe we can. Amen? If we lose that, all that we have because we're believers, are we still going to believe? Paul did that. Paul was saying, listen, I suffer, and it doesn't, I suffer because of Christ, and it's okay. My suffering doesn't, doesn't nullify the fact that I know who Jesus is. Right, let's go back in that. Let's go back to that verse, um, second, the second Timothy. Let me show you something. That this and that the part of the service. It says in verse eleven. It says, "And this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That, that and that, this is why I am suffering." Say, this is why I'm suffering. This is why I'm suffering. Why am I suffering? Because of the gospel. So Paul's suffering, if you will, his suffering, Paul's suffering, if you will, did change his mind on what the gospel is all about. He was looking at his suffering, if you will, through the eyes of the gospel. Most of us look at our suffering and try to and see the gospel through our suffering. It's not how we're supposed to do it. We're supposed to look at our suffering through the eyes of the gospel. Let me say it again. When we look at our suffering, we're looking at the gospel. Why am I suffering? Why am I going through this? Why does God allow this to happen? Why does people starve? Why are people, why are, uh, people not healed? We look at it through our suffering. When we should look at it through the gospel... And we say, well, even though I'm going through this circumstance, God can heal that. God can deliver me from that. God can help me through that situation. Amen. But most of us look at it, and I, I don't, I'm saying all of us at times, we look at it through the, the eyes of the suffering. Man, I hurt. My body hurts. I, don't, I, 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 I just, there's no hope. Amen. I'm losing hope. I'm, I'm so oh, confused about things. That's what happens when you just look at things through the eyes of suffering. But when you look through it through the eyes of the gospel, then you can say, no matter what I go through, even though I've been beat, even though I've been whipped, even though I've been stoned, even though I've got, got some problems in my life, even though I go through that, I know whom I believe in. Yes, amen. I know who he is. His name is Jesus. Yes. Yes. This is how we're supposed to look at the gospel. Amen? Not through our suffering. We're going to suffer stuff. We're going to go through issues. How many has gone through some stuff this past year? Amen? Most of us say, yes, we've been, we're going through stuff, or we're, we're in stuff, we're going through it. But it's not going to nullify who I believe in. I believe in Jesus. And all my suffering, and all the situations in my life, and all the hurt, and all the pain, and all the unforgiveness that I haven't done yet, I still look through the eyes of Christ. And then I can say, yes, I know, no matter what I go through. Paul died when he was about 60 years old or so. After he was in prison, after he was shipwrecked, after he went into Rome. We don't, some of our scholars are not really sure how he died, but we, we assume that Nero probably had his head cut off after he pinned the last part of Timothy, I guess. He was telling us, or it is actually telling Timothy, his protege, he was saying, listen, know who you believe in, and no matter what happens, don't get off your center. Don't get off this. You're going to go through this. You're going to go through some suffering. You're going to go through some problems. And maybe you go through some suffering just because of your believer. Most of us here probably haven't had that issue yet. I'm a Christian, and you're no good. I was talking about the, the lady from uh, Mississippi, who her boss made her take all her Christian cards and their, their stuff off her desk area. I shared that last week, you remember? And she, she said no. She said, she's been working at that place for 15 years, I mean, a long time, and she said, ah, I'm not going to do it. And he said this, okay, then you lose your job. And she said, fine. She's a believer. Is that persecution? Maybe a small part that we deal with today in America? Because, you know, we don't want to have those uh, Christian symbols around anymore. We have the bumper sticker that has all the symbols on it. You ever see those? 
You have the crescent, you have the star, you have the cross, you have the fish, you have whatever, you know, all the different symbols on it. You see those bumper stickers? We have a lot of them in Madison. I said, oh Lord, they're so confused. You know, um, we had a meeting on Wednesday. Some of you have asked about that meeting. We had a meeting on Wednesday with Pastor Jorge and his board. I'll tell you what, I've never been in a meeting before, and all the times I've ever been in any church meeting, that everybody was in agreement. Can you say amen? Amen. It was, it was amazing. As you went, we went down and we shared, uh, shared a little bit what I felt God was doing. Pastor Jorge shared a little bit, and we're in agreement about that. And then, Tina, anyway, we just went around the table. We just asked people to make comments and, and what they thought what God was doing. And even though my Spanish is horrible, I could understand uh, that they all agreed that this was the right thing to do and that God was bringing us together and that we we're going to see uh, our two churches come together soon. I don't know when exactly. I says the first step was to making sure that we're all in agreement. Amen? And we've been talking about that, right, guys? We've been talking about you know, unity in the body of Christ. And that unity in the body of Christ means that we, 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 we don't worry about denominationalism. We don't worry about, you know, this little thing or that little thing. We're coming together because of Christ, amen? And we're putting down these walls of uh, separation and bringing unity, as, Je as Jesus prayed in John 17, that we're one as Christ and the Father and the Spirit are one, then we should be one also as Jesus prayed for those that came after the apostles, if you read in uh, 17, around 20. And so I believe that God's saying that we should be one. And so I've been, this is about a year now, a little over a year, that God's put this in my heart. And now just approaching Pastor Jorge and talking with him and saying, hey, what do you think about that? So we're one in Christ Jesus. So they're like, uh, I forget the lady's name. And, and we just went down around the table and everybody just made the same comment. It was like, it wasn't like they were saying the same thing. It was said differently, but it was that, hey, yes, we believe that this should happen. And so uh, I said, okay, and we all agree. We prayed together. It was anointed prayer. The presence of God was there. And we're just going to come up with some strategies now. How can we do that? How can we incorporate us as one in Christ Jesus? See, it's not one with the world that God, Christ was praying about. It wasn't one with all of these uh, non-Christian religions. We call it the Unitarian Church. We're, we're talking about one with those that believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. For your sins and mine. That his blood was shed that we may be forgiven. Amen. That Christ rose again from the dead on the third day. We believe that. We believe that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us right now. And we believe in the hope that he is coming back. Amen. And so when we have believed brothers and sisters like that, let's, let's quit worrying about language. Let's quit worrying about uh, denominationalism. Let's quit worrying about all the things that separate us. And let's come together, amen, and present a gospel that the unsaved world, those that, that don't know Jesus, will come and know us because we love one another, amen? Hallelujah, amen? Can you do that? Amen. Can you do that? Amen, praise the Lord. So Paul, in all his suffering... It says that um, he was saying to us that let's present to God or to the world. Let's present to the world or let's show the world our suffering and our weakness and show them that we have a God that will help us overcome that weakness or that suffering. Amen? Because if we present anything else to the world, then we're just presenting a religion. Amen? Let me say that again. Let us present to the world our suffering and our weaknesses and let's show a God that help us overcome that. Because we can't overcome it by our own. We can only overcome certain things through the power of Christ. Amen? And that's what the world's looking for, isn't it? The world's looking, how do I get out of my situation? Where's hope today? Why do people put those bumper stickers on them like they would every religious representative? Well, one is a religion. They say, well, there's many ways to heaven or many ways to God, right? Well, that's not true. We know there's only one. Acts tells us there's only one way to heaven through Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Everything else, like, I just I have to get a, everything else separates us. Everything else separates us. What brings us together? Jesus Christ. Let's get together with him. Amen? All right, let me move on. Let, let me move on. I'm gonna, I want to uh, close and look towards, uh, get back on my sermon notes, I guess. He's like, yeah, I need to do that. 
Hallelujah. Talk about scars. Scar, God's a scar shaper. He shapes our scars. I remember when uh, Andy fell on over his bike. Do you remember that? We're in California. And I can't remember the whole story. I just remember uh, him riding his bike and falling, or some, some, some kids helped him, made him fall because he was running away from them. And he flew over his handlebars right onto the sidewalk, and he hit his chin on the sidewalk, so we had a nice little opening under his chin, right? And I mean, God made chins like a certain way for a reason, didn't he? And then the shape, if you look at his scar, you can see it just goes right along the bottom of his chin. It's just perfect. You can't even see it when you're looking at it. It's just right there, but it's underneath. If you look at it, you can see it. It's got, a, God just shaped that thing a certain way, and now you can't even see it. It's just amazing. I remember the rest of the story, too, because I think there were some kids chasing him, right? And then I remember uh, Amy, where's Amy at? She's in the nursery. I remember Amy, she was about this big. And she, you know, she's a little firecracker. She's just yelling at those guys. I mean, from the window, we could see her yelling at them. This little girl, these big kids, and she's telling them not to mess with her brother. It was, a, it was the other part of the story. But anyway, uh, he got this scar, and, and um, uh, it's just God just shaped it just a beautifully, so you, you can't see it today. And I think God shapes our scars a certain way too when we go through stuff. Paul was saying, you know, he gave me, put me through all these things. Why? Because he showed our, his weakness. Paul was, you know, in his suffering, in his weakness, and God became strong in Paul's life. And I think sometimes we go through stuff. I remember being taught as a young believer that we go through things so we can share that with other people. You ever hear that? You go through suffering so you can be a witness to somebody else maybe down the road that is going through that. And I remember we were going through some things. We had, uh, uh, I guess one of the biggest things is I remember Tina and I, we couldn't have children. And so we were in a church in, near a Marine Corps base, and there was a lot of young people there. And with a lot of young people, young married couples, there was a lot of babies everywhere. I think we had baby dedications almost every other Sunday. There was a baby being dedicated. And we would sit there, and Tina would cry, you know, during that time because we wanted to have a baby. And so we were married about six years at this time, so we are really desperate, you know. We believed God could do it. We did all the testing, and we see all the doctors and all that stuff, and still nothing. And I remember coming back to the church. It was a, I was on a, a, a class. I went to a class in California. came back, and the pastor said to us one service. It was a Sunday evening service, which, you know, we don't do anymore. But uh, Sunday evening service, and he said to us, come on, Pastor Elvis, it was time for you to have babies. And he prayed for us, and we were healed. And God, we had charity. And so Charity and Lauren are here, so they're from back in California for a month or so, and then uh, they're heading to Utah, so we're excited for what God's doing in their lives and the people they meet. So we, we believe that. But every time we meet somebody, a couple, that's going through that, we just have so much compassion for them because we know exactly what they're feeling. We know exactly what they're doing. And God puts those scars in our lives, if you will, those situations, those suffering, so we can help other people. I really believe that. And Paul was able to identify with a lot of people in prison. Now think about in prison, he led, Paul led some of the Roman soldiers to Jesus. He led those, cap, those people that were chained to him. Can you imagine being chained to Paul? That's what they used to do back then. Chained to Paul, Paul singing, like Paul and Silas were singing and praising God, and the jail shook, and they, and they were they were out of the prison. Remember that? I mean, Paul was in there. He says, "Listen, give me another piece of paper. I, I got to write this down." And Paul was in there, and I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to be the rough and gruff, you know, Roman soldier that says, you know, in charge of this guy for I don't know how long they were before he was executed. But, I mean, he led a lot of them to Jesus because he lived it. He was suffering, and he's still able to believe in Jesus, and he, he presented to you. And I believe God puts us through these things, through these steps in our lives, so we can be a witness for Christ. Amen? Do you remember the story? i got one more story for you. Is that okay? Can I have one more story? And let's turn to, uh, well, let me just tell you a story. Luke chapter 24, verse 13. Do you remember the, the, uh, the apostles, um, uh, the men, uh, the two men that were on the road uh, to Damascus, and they were walking after Jesus was ex executed, and then they said he rose from the dead. So they were kind of walking. It's about a seven-mile walk from Jerusalem. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes alongside them, but they didn't know him. 
And he goes, he's like, hey, what's happening? And they said, well, don't, haven't you heard? And he talked about Jesus, told them what happened. And, and Jesus was like, okay, okay. And then Jesus started to talk to them about this Jesus, about the man that they seen executed. And he's been to share with them from, the, from Moses through the law all the way through the prophets and through the Psalms. He began to share with these two who this Jesus was. Beautiful story. I love this story. I just love it. And so he began to share with them, and it was getting late. They're on the road, and it was getting late, so he said to them, or uh, they said to Jesus, hey, come over and have dinner with us. It's late. Why don't you just come stay at our house? Just come and have dinner with us. And they said, okay. And he said, okay. And so he came in, and they said they served, they served uh, food, so it must have took some time. You know, they, and when you read scripture, sometimes it's like, you think it's like that, but you know, they had to make the food. So, so somebody there at the home had to make the food. And then they sat down, and Jesus took the bread. A loaf of bread, or kind of a skinny loaf of bread, or whatever. And he said, the Bible says there that he, read it, it says he blessed it, right? He blessed the bread. And if you don't think about Jewish culture, but when they bless bread, they don't just bless it like we do. Hold hands, close eyes. Jesus blessed our food, amen. He took the bread, he broke the bread, he lifted up and prayed over it. And then he presented to them. He gave to them. And then it says there, the next part of scripture says, then their eyes were open. Right? He took the bread, he prayed over the bread, he blessed it, then he gave it to them, Right? Yes. It says, then their eyes were open, and they understood everything he told them, and then he was gone. He disappeared. Why did they recognize him? Then. They didn't recognize him when he talked about the, and the law. They didn't recognize him when he talked about what the prophet said about him. They didn't, they, they didn't recognize him about when he went through the Psalms. He did, they didn't recognize him. Well, all the stories have, but at that moment, when he blessed that bread, he broke it and gave it to them, then they recognized him. It's fascinating to think about this. Why, at that moment, did they recognize Jesus? Because I believe when he broke the bread and he gave it to them, he went like this. And they saw the scars. And then they knew it was him. It was Jesus. Amen? Your scars are for a purpose, and God's going to use them, amen, to bring people to Jesus. When you're suffering, don't look at it as a scar, but look at it through the eyes of Jesus, that he's bringing you through that situation so you may glorify him, amen? Amen, praise the Lord. We're going to take communion today, and I want to pray for you before we do that. Um, would you, Dion, would you come and... Um, Lauren, would you come and help serve communion today? And as the Bible says, as often as we do communion, as often as we, we take this communion, we're remembering what happened to him. Amen? So today with this sermon, when thinking about what he went through, the scars, the beating, the whipping, the crown of thorns, remember that. Amen? Go ahead, take that and serve people. They're all in one little piece. There are a couple of Jews, and on top is a little wafer, so you have to take it off. So go ahead and serve the people, and um, <clears throat> I'll have you guys pray over the, each element, okay? But we think about this right now. As you, we're gonna, ready to take communion, as we're ready to take communion, I want to pray for you, and when you get your emblem and you're ready, I want you to stand. But I want to pray for you. If you have a sickness in your body, or you're... Uh, have some kind of physical ailment that you are dealing with, I want to pray for you. Uh, is that anybody here besides Lewis? We pray for Lewis every week. Does anybody have some heart problem? Uh, maybe it's, uh, uh, I'm thinking of, um, heart disease? Do you have that? Would you stand? Yeah? If you have high blood pressure? If you have hair on your head, stand. No. If you have a headache? Uh, if you have something physical in your arm, legs, stand. 
I believe God wants to heal you this morning. Sometimes our sickness can be our scars. We're, we deal with it over and over and over. But in our sickness and in our pain and in our disappointments, we still say, Jesus Christ is Lord. And, in time, and sometimes it can be frustrating. Sometimes it can be disappointing. Uh, it could be financial stuff. But whatever it is, you know, God wants to take care of that today. Let me pray for you. Father, you see those that are standing here today. Yes. Father, your word tells us that by the wounds and the scars that Jesus bore on his back and on his body, that by those scars we are healed. And Jesus, I thank you this morning for going through all that for us that today we can agree with each other and pray for one another that our sins and our sicknesses can be forgiven and healed. So I thank you, Jesus, for healing our bodies, healing these, these that are here this morning that have stood up and said, hey, I have pain. I need a touch from you, Lord. I pray that you touch them right now in Jesus' wow. name. And Father, for those that have heart disease or or dealing with some kind of high blood pressure. Father, I pray for that too right now in Jesus' name, that you would just take that away. Father God, take that medicine away, God. Take all the all that the doctors have said that is wrong. And I pray, Father God, through the, through the blood of Jesus and through the scars that Jesus brought us back, that you make it right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, folks. Thank him right now for the healing that he provides. Thank you, Jesus, for providing our healing. We give you glory and praise for that. Yes, Father. In Jesus' precious and holy name. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said so at the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread. If you take the bread, if you take that little wafer right now and off your cup, I'm going to need two hands for that. Father, let's not look inwardly 
about what we're suffering through, but let us look through the lens of the gospel that you may be glorified through our suffering, like Paul was, Lord God. That they'll know that there's a God because you love us, God. I mean, we speak even though we're in trouble, everything, even though we go through stuff, yes, God. Father. We say Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. Yes. And we thank you for that, Father God. And we thank you for the love that you bestow upon every person that's here today. I pray your blessings, Father, over every family that's represented, every person that's here, God. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Praise God.